Welcome back to My Rose Corner. We back to today with some more Thomas Soul. All right, this is Thomas Soul versus Trevor Noah on slavery and reparations. This should be a good one. <laughs> All right, thank y'all so much for uh, 10K, man. We hit 10K in uh, in a month. Uh, new channel goal is 15,000. Uh, 15, All right, so uh, if you enjoy this reaction, uh, all I ask is for a like for the algorithm and subscribe to help the channel grow. All right, let's get it, man. So to your question, to your question, I think you have to understand what the word reparations <coughs> means first. So reparations, you are repairing something that you have broken. You are paying for something that you were supposed to pay for. I'm not saying that there aren't people living in America today who are suffering and are going through pain and strife because of what's happening when it comes to, um, you know, uh, machines taking jobs, uh, factories becoming industrialized, etc. But reparations is a specific conversation about a specific time in America, and that is black people were slaves. Article that got a lot of attention in The Atlantic a couple of years ago called the... I'm going to wait till I hear both parts before I comment were slaves. Article that got a lot of attention in The Atlantic a couple of years ago called The Case for Reparations by Ta-Nehisi Coates. Quote, white supremacy is a force so fundamental to America that it is difficult to imagine the country without it. Reparations is the price we must pay to see ourselves squarely. Close quote. And Tom Sowell, who actually saw Jim Crow with his own eyes and experienced it, responds, how? It would be nice to know his uh, evidence for what he said, just to be old-fashioned about it. Uh, no, it, 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 it was a rotten system. But I don't know how, how, how we get from that to reparations. I mean, what we see in the United States in terms of the bad things, you see all around the world. If you were to give reparations to everyone whose ancestors had been slaves, I suspect that you would have to give reparations to more than half the entire population of the globe. Slavery was not confined to one set of races. I suspect that most of the people who were either slaves or slave owners around the world were neither white nor black. I mean, this was, this was a universal curse of the human species. Africa, the Middle East, Asia, oh, slavery took place and, everywhere. And, and, and it continued elsewhere long after. Uh, it, it was abolished in the Western countries. Right. You know what I mean? It, I've even heard. All right. So yeah, like um, like he was saying, there's a universal curse. Uh, <clears throat> as you know, what I'm saying it was a universal curse of the human species. Uh, it's like okay, yeah, reparations were, you know, awarded. You know, what I'm saying promised to us. Um, but as you look further in history, everybody, you know what I'm saying, it, it wasn't it wasn't just race. Every everywhere in the world they had slaves. Europeans slaved other Europeans, Asians slaved other Asians, Africans slaved other Africans. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It was a hierarch a hierarchy of you know what I'm saying. Of 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 uh, power, you know what I'm saying? Um, people higher up would slave the people on the bottom to uh, keep them in power, keep you know what I'm saying, do all the dirty work for them. So it's like, okay, yeah, it was promised to us, but for one, who pays? Where we gonna get this money from? Like, <laughs> you could you could want reparations, but you might be the one ended up. You know, you might vote for reparations, but you might end up being the one paying somebody because you don't know who your forefathers were, your ancestors was. Your ancestors could have been slave owners. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's 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 like who pays? Who's going to have to pay? Are we going to have to go back to Africa and get that money? Are we going to the Arabs to get that money? 
You going to Europe to get that money? Like, going to Asia to get that money? Like, who, who's, who, who's paying for it? That's that's the whole thing. Because a lot of us, you know what I'm saying? A lot of our people might have been slave owners. We don't know. Because everybody's people was trying to slave their own people, you know what I'm saying, for their own good, for their own come up. I heard people say like, oh, but there were some of the Irish who were indentured. Like, yeah, let's slavery. Look at the numbers, look at the time, look at the level of work. You could not work toward your freedom. <laughs> for most black people in America, this was a time when you were, that was it, you lived and died as a slave. And so that's what reparations is about. The other thing, I have a slight um, sidebar in the, on the history of slavery. Mm -hmm. The history of slavery, slavery existed all over the world for thousands of years among all sorts of people as far back as the history of the human species goes. It's one of many evils that the left tries to localize when, it, when in fact it is, a, it is a universal evil. But more than that, as much as slavery is repudiated around the world today, prior to the 18th century, I know of no serious effort to abolish the institution anywhere. 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 Not in Africa, not in, not oh, in the Arabian not world. Not in Africa in the 21st century. Mm. Uh, when Adam Smith wrote in 1776 that the only place in the world where slavery had been abolished completely was Western Europe. Uh, and so this was... As late as, as, late as, the, as late as the year this country was founded. Yes. And so the idea that this is something that the United States had that nobody else had or, or the, the other, other countries that didn't have... Uh, it's been estimated that there are more slaves in India than in the entire Western Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. And that's quite, uh, and that's before and after Columbus uh, got here. Right. Uh, and so I hear what you're... So Trevor, Trevor was saying that, you know, you know, for the slave that helped build this country, they, they should have got the reparations. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, they should have something because uh, the British uh, compensated, you know, the states for what they was losing in, you know, income and future income for when they dropped them 20 pounds. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that that. That should that should have been like that right there, should have went to the. You know what I'm saying? Being humane, that right there should have went to the slaves, to give to give the slaves a fair shake in the world. You know what I'm saying? But it's like now, like I'm saying, where we go, where we go get that money at? Where's the money coming from? Atlanta, uh, TV show Atlanta, did a great episode on this about what would happen if reparations happen. I might review that on this channel uh, because it's really deep. It's really deep. It went into uh, like this uh, white guy that was, you know what I'm saying, everything was, you know, he was going through some things in his life, like middle class guy, whatever. Um, all of a sudden, he started getting taxed with reparations for the evils of his forefathers. And um, uh, he lost his shit. Uh, but um, it's a great episode. I might review it. I forget where I was going. Because <laughs> I was about to touch on Thomas, uh, what Thomas said. Hold on. Slaves in India than in other countries that the United <laughs> States had that nobody else had or, or the, the other, other. It is as late as the, as late as the year this country was founded. Yes. And so the idea that this is something that the United States had that nobody else had or, or the, the other, other countries that didn't have, uh, it's been estimated that there are more slaves in India than in the entire Western Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. And that's quite, and that's before and after Columbus got here. Right. And so I hear what you're saying, but I think Columbus, 
was what happened in Africa anyway. The eight is a, it is evils that the left of among all sorts of people, as far back as the history of the human species goes. It's one of many evils that the left tries to localize when, when in fact it is, a, it is a universal evil. But more than that, as much as slavery is repudiated around the world today, prior to the 18th century, I know of no serious effort to abolish the institution anywhere. 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 Not in Africa, not in, not oh, in the Arabian not world. Not in Africa in the 21st century. Mm. Uh, Adam Smith wrote in 1776 that the only place in the world where slavery had been abolished completely was Western Europe. Mm. Uh, and so this was... As late as, as, late as, the, as late as the year this country was founded. Yes. And so the idea that this is something that the United States had that nobody else had or, or the, the other, other countries that didn't have, uh, it's been estimated that there are more slaves in India than in the entire Western Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. and, that's quite, uh, and that's before and after Columbus uh, got here. Right. Uh, and so He's pretty much talking about, like, you know what I'm saying, the focus on reparations was, has been, like, you know what I'm saying, more the focus of abolishment of slavery uh, you know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, y'all know it's still going on, you know what I'm saying, in places. And, you know what I'm saying? You know, these institutions, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, it's just another form. Uh, you know what I'm saying? The prison system and stuff like that. Outside of criminals, which you, when you leak, look further into it. Uh, but, yeah. So I hear what you're saying, but I think that's a completely separate conversation that needs to be had about the now. Because if you, if you are not careful, what you then do is you combine everybody's suffering into the same ball and you make it seem like all injustices have the same weighting. And they don't, just like crimes. You know, theft isn't the same as murder. We don't try them the same way. And as much as there is a white person who's suffering today, I feel for anybody who's suffering, because I know what it's like to be poor. I know what it's like to suffer. I didn't come from a wealthy family. We struggled when I was growing up. But I also understand that there are levels of that suffering. You know, and so sometimes white people, it, it, does, it does block a white person because you go, white privilege, and a person goes, I'm poor and I'm white, where's the privilege? You know, white people are like, I wish I could activate my white privilege. I wish I could do it right now. White privilege, give me something. <laughs> I, I get that, I get that, trust me, I get it. It is hard to accept that you have benefits because of the color of your skin if you cannot see the benefits that you have. The book that I'm writing now, I, I discover this is true not only in the United States, uh, it's true in England. And the, and the situation is wholly different. And yet, if you read uh, the, the data, for example, from, from uh, London, the, the, the uh, educational tests and so forth, you see that uh, and there, uh, immigrants from Africa uh, pass this test they have. Uh, I'm talking about low-income people now. Mm -hmm. uh, six, nearly 60% of the time. Uh, uh, blacks from uh, the Caribbean, like 50%, so on. Native-born whites in the same low-income bracket pass this test 30% of the time. Uh, and it's the same thing. The, the foreign people come in, they haven't had generations of being steeped in the welfare state vision, the vision of grievances, victimology, and resentments, and the idea that there are enemies out there dedicated to keeping you down. That's the, that, that's the message that's been pumped into the head of the, of the white lower class in Britain. And that's the, uh, the image that's been pumped into the black low-income people in the United States. And the, and the results are the same in both cases. Mm. But the thing I try to explain mm. to a person is... Think and the results are the same in both cases. Mm, same results, okay, all right. Mm. But the thing I try to explain to a person is, think of it more like golf. Don't think of it as privilege, then think of it like a handicap. Right? In golf, they acknowledge that you are in a position where you need so many advantages to be competitive in the game. Is that, is that we ought not to be doing this? <clears throat> you know, there, there are various uh, laws and policies that benefit one group at the expense of another. But I think uh, affirmative action has the distinction of being one that it harms everybody, though in different ways. And so you, you, there, there, there's a lot of evidence that there are black kids who have all the qualifications to be successes in college, who nevertheless are failures because they are systematically mismatched with institutions whose standards they don't meet. 
even though they may meet the standards of 80 or 90 percent of the colleges in America. I remember I first aware of this when I was teaching at Cornell, and I found that half the black students at Cornell were on some kind of academic probation. And so I went over to the administration building and looked up the SATs of these students. The average black student at Cornell at that time scored at the 75th percentile. Which had, is pretty darn good. Yes. And so that means that in, that in most colleges in this country, they would have no trouble, and many of them would be on the dean's list. But at Cornell, the average uh, liberal arts student at that time was in the 99th percentile. And, and, when, you, when, you, and when you're teaching the students, students like that, uh, you teach at a pace that most people of any race cannot keep up with. And I, I was, it was always complained that I was assigning all kinds of uh, reading but heck, you know, I'm teaching kids who are in the top 1%. They can, they, they can keep up with, it, with the reading that I'm right. assigning. Uh, so Cornell was taking very talented black kids and spending four years teaching them to feel inadequate. Yes, Su and succeeding at that. Mm. Right, so what they say is you have a hand. Damn. It's teaching them to feel inadequate, which further was playing into what he was saying about the handicap. Instead of, you know what I'm saying? Because when you like, when you teach, teach that inadequacy, that, that, that plays into the, uh, you know, victim mind state, you know what I'm saying? Which is, which, which is in itself is, is, is handicapping somebody, to be real. Handicap of 15, so that means like you're going to be hitting from this tee and you get more chances to get the ball in because we understand the position you're in. And if you're a black person in America, from slavery, from day one. Pondering all this, I, I noticed something, a, a column that you wrote, this is a couple of years ago, in which you rebutted Nicholas Kristof of the New York Times. And Kristof had ascribed the gaps between African Americans and whites in America, gaps in wealth, gaps in educational achievement, the usual gaps, mm -hmm. to, and this is a quotation from Christoph, to the lingering effects of slavery, close quote. Oh, yes. And here's Tom Sowell, quote, if we wanted to be serious about <laughs> evidence, we might compare where blacks stood 100 years after the end of slavery with where they stood after 30 years of the liberal welfare state. In other words, we could compare hard evidence on the legacy of slavery with hard evidence on the legacy of liberals." Close quote. And the number of injustices that have held black people back in America amount to an insurmountable, like you, you, look, at, you look at black people's freedom, you look at black people's land, just, just land alone. The amount of wealth you can, you can acquire over time if you own land is exponential because you have the land, you have the fact that you can borrow based on the land. You have the fact that you can use the money that you have borrowed to grow more wealth. You can use it to grow your family's wealth. Just taking that away from black people alone. Right, right. And also... So he was talking about the 40 acres and the mule. Uh, that was promised, the reparation. Family's wealth. Just taking that away from black people alone. Right, right. And also, if, so if you think you've been done, if you think you've been wronged, your recourse might also be more likely to politics to try to, to try to redress this whole redistribution yes. oh, yeah. rather than hit the books, acquire the skills, get the well, job. And, 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 but the other thing too, I, one of the, my favorite uh, statistic in there is that uh, the poverty rate among blacks as a whole is 22%. Mm -hmm. Among whites as a whole is 11%. And among black married couples is 7.5%. So, so and it's been and, and black married couples have never had a, a poverty rate as high as ten percent in any year since nineteen ninety four. All right. So to the to the to the cry, what is to be done? Tom Sowell answers. It's been done. Get an education. Stay mar Get married. Have kids after you get married. That's that's sort of the answer, right? Well, yes, and the things that work for other people work, work, tend, tend to work pretty generally. <laughs> is crippling them. And so Tom said, follow the blueprint. 
Some said follow the blueprint. You right. combine that with slavery and you look at Jim Crow laws. You didn't let black people in America live in the areas that they wanted to live in. They couldn't get loans from the banks that they wanted to get loans from. And then on top of that, when they started getting the loans from American banks, American banks were found to be giving them higher interest rates when in fact they were the same risk as many of the other races that they were, they were, they were giving loans to. So when they say they fact checked, then it was false. <laughs> when you combine all of those things, I think it's safe to say that black Americans have a conversation that they need to be having with the United States. Doesn't involve me, doesn't involve white people, doesn't, it's like, it's like, yo, American government, meet the black people. That's it. Have that conversation. In terms of political leaders, all the, all the incentives politically are for, for black leaders to blame all problems in the black community on the larger society. And that enables them to take on the role of being the defender of the black community against enemies which in turn uh, creates the situation in which many blacks don't feel that anything that they do is going gonna, is gonna to help themselves unless it's done politically as, as a group, that there's no point. I mean, why, why would you, if you believe what, the, what, that's what they say, why would you want to knock yourself out in the school knowing that the man is not going to let you get anywhere? Well, I, one of the most pathetic things I heard in recent years was a young black man saying that, you know, at one point, he thought he would join the Air Force and become a pilot. And then he says he realized that the white man is not going to let a black man become a pilot. And he was saying this decades after the Tennessee Airmen had established their reputation in combat in Europe. You know. And they fought for that. They fought for that. But, he, but the hopelessness, hopelessness is, is one of the you big... You got to want to fight for it. You got to have that fighting. No matter who you are, if you don't fight for it, you're not going to get it. Ain't shit being handed to you. The products of the, of the race industry, that, that you, have, you have no chance. I remember giving a talk at Marquette, and at the end of the talk, among the questions that was asked, a young, again, young black man got up and he said, even though I am graduating from Marquette uh, University, what hope is there for me? And uh, having gone through college when I was in the 50s, I don't remember any blacks saying that in the 1950s, when there was a lot more obstacles to overcome than there were when this guy is graduating from Marquette. Facts. They had to go through shit. They had to fight. You didn't, you didn't have that. They didn't have that. Our parents didn't have that mindset. You know what I'm saying? Our parents didn't have that mindset. So how... <clears throat> How do you have that mind state now when we have way more freedom than they had back then? The mind state. There was a lot more obstacles to overcome than there were when this guy is graduating from Marquette. But you, but you have to pr pr produce that kind of feeling in order to serve the interests of those in the race industry. Somewhere watching this interview, there's a young Thomas Sowell. There's an African-American who's smart and wants to do something with his life. What's, it se seems to me I've al we've already got one piece of advice you'd offer to him is stay away from the, from the races industry. Stay away from the what, race what hustlers. Ad, what advi race hustlers. What advice would you give a young Thomas Sowell? How do you make something of yourself as an African-American in America today? the way anybody else would. You equip yourself with skills that people are willing to pay for. All right. Tom. That is a bar. <laughs> that was a bar. You I want to go talk to Peterson. <laughs> You equip yourself with tools that people are willing to pay for. And that is how you survive in America, buddy. That's just how you survive, period. You know what I'm saying? You gotta get out of the, you gotta get out of the uh, mentality that, that, that everybody owes you or somebody. I go, I go through life not expecting shit. I don't expect nothing from no one.
You know what I'm saying? I bust my ass to get where I am. Why? Because I equip myself with the tools that people are willing to pay for. When, you know what I'm saying? Before I was able to be a full-time filmmaker, I bust my ass, you know what I'm saying, doing industrial jobs, you know what I'm saying, acquired certain skills to keep me afloat, you know what I'm saying, but when I got into the um, film industry, <clears throat> I wanted to be an actor, I just wanted to be an actor first, and I wanted to be a writer, because I wasn't getting the roles that I wanted, uh, you know what I'm saying, I wasn't getting the roles I wanted, so guess what, I started writing, so I started writing the roles I wanted, right, all right, now, I need somebody to produce that, you know what I'm saying, to put my stuff out there, to get a reel out there, because I'm not getting booked on any gigs. So guess what? I learned how to film. I learned how to do sound. I learned how to do light. You know what I'm saying? And as I'm equipping myself with all these skills to help put myself out there as an actor, you know what I'm saying? I developed a whole new set of skills that people were willing to pay for. Guess what I did with those skills? You know what I'm saying? I went from, you know what I'm saying, started getting hired, started going from set to set, started learning more things, you know what I'm saying, it, it, to the point where I knew every position, every position. Now, when I'm not getting work as an actor, I can go get work as an editor. I can go get work as a grip. I can go do behind the scenes, you know what I'm saying? I got plenty of things to keep me afloat till I get my break. And that's how you gotta do, man. You gotta equip yourself with the tools. You got to never give up. I'm in, a, I'm in an industry where the odds is like that if you make it, okay? I got, a, I got a show on network TV now. I'm writing shows for networks now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> I got another show coming to network. Uh I've been in some things, you know what I'm saying? I'm pretty successful in that aspect. But it's still a lot to go. There's still a lot I got to do. And as a, as I continue my journey, you know what I'm saying, I will be equipping myself with more tools that will make me indisposable. So, and that's just how you got to be. You can't, I ain't expect, I don't expect nobody to give me a role. So I make my own. I create my own. You got to keep creating your own path, man. And, and, and just not expect shit, man. Don't nobody owe you no, nothing. Ain't nobody going to give you nothing, man. You got to work hard for it. And if you keep a victim mentality, you ain't never going to get that. Because the victim mentality is going to hold yourself back. It's going to hold you back, man. And I ain't waiting on no reparation. I ain't going to get that shit. I know this shit ain't going to happen. <laughs> Why would I get my hopes up for it? You know what I'm saying? Then, like I said before, who pays for that? What is what is that gonna do? What's 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 gonna happen? Man, we ain't got that shit now. That shit ain't coming. Let's just be real. <laughs> Let's just be. I'm realist, man. I'm a realist. And and and, 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 and forgive me for not touching on a lot of things in in, in there, cause it's a lot. I'm I'm watching this. For my first, y'all have seen this before. I'm watching this for my first time with y'all. You know what I'm saying? It, it is a lot to download at one time. <laughs> you know what I mean? It is a lot to download at one time. You see, you see, as you see me, sometimes you're going to see me close my eyes. And you know what I'm saying? That's when I try to zero in and just really focus on what he's saying. Because he's, he's dropping a lot of knowledge. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man. Um, but yeah, that's 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 my two cents on. It. Like I say, man, I, as I get to talking about these, you know, what I'm saying I don't like to go on too long because I begin to 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 ramble, <laughs> and I don't want to bore y'all with my rambling. Okay, uh, but that's my two cents on it. Um, you know, I know you're gonna jump down in the comments, so you know, all I ask is for healthy debates and you know, keep it respectful in the comments, man. You know. Uh, but this was another great video. Let me know if you want me to do the uh, episode on Atlanta where they did an episode about if reparations were to happen. Uh, and I'll figure out how 
to do the whole because I'm about to start doing movie and TV shows review reviews in here. I did a poll to see if I should do another channel for the movie and the TV shows review, but y'all was like, you just need to do them here. So I'm gonna do them here. All right, I might start with that. Um, all right, so uh, if you enjoyed this reaction, uh, all I ask for is a like for the algorithm and to subscribe to help the channel grow. We're on the road to 15K now. Thank you for 10K and uh, thank you so much for uh, watching this video. All right, man, peace out, man, and one love. I mean that.